Well, I looked around on the internet and I just couldn't find a video that had already done it. So we're gonna rebuild the universal joint on the end of our Vegas steering wheel today. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. Now, if your car has one of these joints and it's not necessarily a Chevy Vega, this, in this installation is gonna work just as well for you. Versions of this steering shaft pot coupler were used widely on mini GM, Ford, and Chrysler vehicles from the 50s until very recently. We'll start by removing the steering column. Removal steps might differ in your application, so check with your local forums for your vehicle. Be careful to take note of the routing of electrical connections. The application for this particular pot coupler comes from my 1972 Chevy Vega, and it may be necessary for you to disassemble the actual pot coupler in order to get the steering column out if you have headers, or if the steering coupler is too big to fit through the hole in the firewall. The problem with the steering coupler on this Vega is that the boot was ripped and it was slinging grease all over the exhaust system. I will mention for my H Browdy brothers that your steering column is totally normal if it looks like this if you have non-power steering. Nothing is supporting the steering shaft other than this white plastic bushing. Disassembly is started by pushing this sir clip out through the bottom of it. I like to use a pair of duckbill pliers and then you can just pull the whole thing out. Once the sir clip is out, the rubber boot comes out the backside, and then you can lift the housing up over the course of the top. Be careful because it is spring-loaded and the little pieces and parts do like to fly everywhere. One benefit of filming for YouTube is that I have a record about how all the pieces came off, which I definitely had to reference. Now we can toss out that old rubber boot and clean up and inspect our steering shaft. Now should you find that you need to replace this cross piece, you can remove it using the vise and a socket, but as mine looks completely fine with no damage, or excessive wear, and the cross pieces fit firmly in the steering shaft, I'm just going to leave it be and we'll move on to inspecting the rest of our pieces. When inspecting the joint piece, you want to check and make sure that the splines all look good and that it's not super dirty inside. I've gone ahead and cleaned out already the back half. There's no cracks, major damage, or excessive wear inside of here either, so we'll finish cleaning it up, go ahead and grease it, and get it ready for reassembly. I'll set that right over there to, to dry. Spring's all done. For parts, I'm using this Crown Automotive Steering Shaft Boot Kit, part number 8132676K, for my application. This one is actually specified for Jeep CJ5 and 6 from the 1980s, but it fits a Vega perfectly, as you can see whenever the old parts and new parts are laid side by side. Exact part numbers for your application may also be different, so once again, resort to your forums for your specific vehicle. I'm using a high temp, high quality bearing grease in order to reassemble all these things. Well, mostly because it's cheap and it's what I had on hand. We want to make sure that we lube up all the moving parts and we'll just go ahead and put a little bit in this main shell here. It should be enough. We'll put the spring back in the main housing and move on to reassembling the boot. The boot should fit tightly over the cross shaft so that it gets a good seal around the main shaft in order to keep all the grease from leaking out. I used a scribe to pry the bottom hole open just a little bit extra so that I could slide it down all the way. Be careful not to rip the boot or else we've done all this for nothing. Before we install all the other parts, we'll go ahead and lube up the tip of our shaft. Yep, I said it. Then we can slip on these little metal cubes and their spring retainer before finally sliding the housing over the top of the assembly. If you have headers, you might find yourself disassembling all of this to slide it in between the header tubes. But it is still good to make a dry run so that you know everything fits together. I got tired of fighting it, so I put a bungee cord to hold it down and a zip tie to hold the bungee cord from going away. And now, maybe, I can get this one to go in. Whew, that was not fun. Now, we just want to make sure that this is actually up in that groove. And then we want to make sure that the other side's in the groove and it's in the groove nicely. Other things that I've bought for this project are these PEX clamps. I bought an assortment of them, clamp the bottom of the boot to the shaft, and then also the pliers that are supposed to clamp Daddy. the PEXs. Yes, sir. Feed it around here like a key ring. Just smash this guy down right there, and that's locked in. Cool. <clears throat> Wow, that's actually really, really good. That worked out really well. That's like perfect. It just doesn't get a whole lot better than that. 
Now our steering column is ready to go back in the car. It's not going to be leaking grease all over our freshly installed headers, which was a big concern of mine. And I know that all the parts in there are good. I could have gone with the universal joint, but honestly, this thing was working just fine and um, there's no reason not to keep it. So we're locked in here. If we go to the other side, we're locked in there. That's all good. Cool. Okay, so note to self, you're going to put this on. Get your steering column lifted up and into place. We'll tighten that down here in a minute. But as far as the headers are concerned, this is done. This is a very simple hour long job. That includes taking it out of the car. It took me about two hours because filming always doubles the time, but the parts were inexpensive. It was fast, it was easy. Don't be afraid of it. Get in there and do something in the garage. I hope this video helps you out with your car. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the like button wherever they're at. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.